So in this video, we're going to talk about how to handle exception data. So if you remember in our original uh, transaction job here, we're loading sales information and we're bumping it up against our products and our stores to see if they're valid. We're saying, you know, if, if, as long as this is a valid product and a valid store, allow it to pass through to the transaction table. And we're doing that through the filter here. Where we, where we actually have a, a if statement that says, if product equals found and stores equals found equals true, then allow the product or the record to pass through to the transaction table. But what if we want to actually log that record, that bad record, to an exception table? So in the SQL Server database, I created a duplicate table of the transaction table, and I called it transaction exceptions. And I simply added one additional column to the end called exception. And that's where we're going to write the exception information so that we can see exactly what happened uh, in, with that particular record. So to perform this, we're going to basically add another SQL Server object. And I'm going to have two outputs now. So I'm going to read from my sales file. I'm going to look up against my product and store and then I'm going to output to either my transaction table or my exception table. So I'll call this transaction exceptions. Okay, so now I want to point that to my transaction exception table. So I'm going to go into my database wizard here and I'm going to import that table. Okay, there's my transaction exceptions table. And I'm going to pull that in. Okay, now that table is configured. So now if I go into my tran, uh, transformation, what I can do here is I can pull down the fields from the original sales file table, but I have this one additional column here called exception. And I want to figure out, well, what happened? What happened with the data that it wasn't good, that I didn't allow it to flow through? So that's all going to be handled through um, some logic that we write in the code behind and through the filters here. Okay, so you'll notice uh, I have this filter here that, that basically said if products found equals true and stores found equals true, then allow it to, to pass through the transaction table. I want to do the exact opposite for the transaction exceptions. I want to say if either the, the product wasn't found or the store wasn't found, then allow it to pass through to the exception table. So I want to do the opposite of what I was doing. So the easiest thing to do is just go into the uh, filter for the original transaction table and just copy that code down here into the um, transaction exceptions table. Except that I want to do the exact opposite. Instead of saying if products found equals true and, and stores found equals true, I want to say if products found equals false or stores found equals false, then allow that product or that record to pass through to the exception table. Okay, so if I hover over my filters here, I got my filter here for my transaction table, and I got slightly the, the exact opposite you know, logic going on my transaction exceptions table. Okay. So these are the deciding points as to whether this record will flow here or whether it will flow down to here. It's all handled through these filters. And then in the exception field level, I can go and say into the code behind and write a little bit of code to determine if uh, what I want to say in that exception column. So I'm just going to write a little bit of vb.net code here. I'm going to create myself a string variable, and I'm going to say if product that found equals false, then no product found. Okay, and then I can say if stores that found equals false then no stores found. Okay. 
Now I can put a little bit of logic in here to determine, you know, was there something in the buffer? So I can maybe put a comma in here so I can say something like, you know, if buffer dot trim uh, does not equal empty string, meaning I had put something in it previously, like the no product found, uh, then I want to just kind of concatenate in a comma. That'll kind of clean up the string a little bit, just in case I get both no product found and no stores found. And then I just need to return that value. I just need to return the buffer. And that will get written to the exception field. So I can, as you can see, I can write any vbnet.net code that I want to transform and create data or cleanse data or do anything I need to do to, to output the correct information to my database. You can get really involved here. I mean, it's the entire .NET language that you have here to be able to write you know, anything that you need to do. So I'm going to say OK here. And as you can see, if I hover over this, I can quickly see the code. I can also click on it and see it down here in the, in the Quick View window. OK. And then I'll say OK. And then I'm just going to compile a job and run it. Okay, so now if I run the job, you'll see that it loads up all the data, it does its lookups, and it says, oh look, there were 13 or 1500 records that I couldn't find either a store or product match on, so I'm going to drop that into the exception table. And there were uh, 15,000 records that I could find a match for, so I'm going to put those into the transaction table. Okay, so now I have kind of a difference here of how many records are getting written to one or the other, depending on, you know, based on that filtering logic that we put in. If I jump over here to SQL Server real quick, I can just do a quick select statement on here. And I can see that my errors are because I'm missing products. And that's because in a previous uh, example, we had actually physically deleted some products from the uh, system so that we could force some errors to happen. Okay, so there's uh, all my missing products here. Now I can go out and either fix those or do whatever I need to do to, to, to correct that information. Maybe the product is missing from my product master. Or maybe it's an invalid product altogether. Okay, so that is how we handle exceptions in uh, through the filtering, and we can put any kind of logic that we need to put in there.